Hello and welcome to 11th session of ASME B31.3 course. This is Ali and I hope you are doing well. Referring to previous sessions, you have acquired sufficient skills to determine the need for impact testing. In this episode, I am going to talk about methods and acceptance criteria for impact testing. Based on paragraph 323.3, when impact testing is required, it shall be done in accordance with table 323.3.1 using the test methods and acceptance criteria described in paragraphs 323.3.2 through 323.3.5. First, let's review table 323.3.1. Impact testing requirements for metals. If the metal needs impact test based on B31.3, we shall refer to this table divided into two rows and two columns. Column A, materials tested by manufacturer or those in table 323.2.2 requiring impact test only on welds. Column B, Materials not tested by manufacturer or those tested by heat treated during or after fabrication. Test group into two rows. Test on materials and test on weld in fabrication or assembly. There is a technique for using this table. The first row is related to type of manufacturer and the second row is related to the weld and heat treatment. Let's review box A used for determining the numbers of tests on metals tested by manufacturer. It says that the greater of the number required by A, material specification or B, applicable specification listed in paragraph 323.3.2. Here I will try to explain this further. It's clear that two numbers should be compared, the number specified by the material specification and the other one specified in the applicable specification listed in paragraph 323.3.2 and then the greater one shall be considered as the number of tests. However, what is the reference of the material specification and the applicable specification in box A1? The answer to this question is somewhat difficult. I have seen code users who didn't know how to use this class. My role in this course is to clarify such uncertainties. Actually, the material specification means the ASTM standard that the material is manufactured based on. For example, if we have ASTM A106, a standard specification for seamless carbon steel pipe for high temperature service. The material specification will be ASTM A106. Also, the applicable specification means the reference specified for each component in paragraph 323.3.2 according to its form. The applicable specification for pipe is A333. Therefore, for product form pipe, ASTM A333 shall be referred as the applicable specification. For tube, the applicable specification is A334. For fittings, is A420. For forgings, is A350. For castings, is A352. For bolting is A320. For plate is A20. Material specification may include impact test requirements. In this case, requirements shall be compared with the applicable specification and then the greater number shall be done for impact testing. If material specification doesn't contain impact test requirements, the applicable specification will be governed. Let's continue with an example for understanding this better. Let's assume that we have ASTM A106 with design minimum temperature equal to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Referring to previous sessions, 
This material shall be impact tested. If material tested by the manufacturer, box A1 of table 323.3.1 shall be followed for number of tests on material. First, we shall check the impact test requirements in A106. Actually, there is no requirement for impact test in the material specification. Therefore, the applicable specification will determine the number of tests in absence of material specification. In the next step, we shall refer to the applicable specification based on the form of product. We know ASTM 106 is pipe. Therefore, the applicable specification will be ASTM A333. Let's have a look at ASTM A333, a standard specification for seamless and welded steel pipe for low temperature service. Impact requirements specified in paragraph 8 of ASTM A333 per grades. Now the question is, which grade shall be used as the applicable specification? The answer is, the nearest grade to minimum design metal temperature, MDMT. In this example, the design minimum temperature is minus 30 degrees Celsius. Referring to table 5 of ASTM A333 impact temperature, we can find that grade 1 of ASTM A333 is applicable for number of impact testing of ASTM A106. In this case, manufacturer of A106 shall consider number of specimens, minimum energy requirements, later expansion requirements, heat treatment, test temperature, and test temperature reduction of ASTM A333 grade 1. If ASTM A106 with design minimum temperature equal to minus 30 degrees Celsius not tested by the manufacturer, we shall follow B1 and the fabricator or erector shall refer to A333 grade 1 as the reference for number of tests. Please note that the manufacturer of ASTM A106 doesn't have to impact test this material typically because there is no impact test requirements in ASTM A106. Only if we specify impact test in purchase order, box A will be applicable. For location and orientation of specimens, requirements of a333 shall be followed based on box 2. Can you guess why the conditions mentioned in this example selecting A106 for design minimum temperature equal to minus 30 degrees Celsius won't happen in the real project? It's related to material selection. If you want to select carbon steel pipe intended for a design minimum temperature equal to minus 30 degrees Celsius, A106 is not appropriate. Actually, as described in material specification, ASTM A106 is a standard specification for seamless carbon steel pipe for high temperature service. In other words, this material is not designed for low temperature and if we want to use it at minus 30 degrees Celsius, it needs impact test on the material further to its material specification requirements that most likely shall be done by the fabricator or erector that will impose cost to the project. However, by selecting materials such as A333 designed for low temperature service, we can optimize the cost. Second row of table 323.3.1 determines the requirements for test on welds in fabrication or assembly. In box 4, you can find requirements for number of test pieces for preparation of impact specimens due to welding conditions. A5 specifies number of test pieces when impact test only on weld is required. B5 
specifies number of test pieces when wells treated during or after fabrication. B6 specifies location and orientation of specimens and as clear tests on wells in fabrication or assembly shall be done by the fabricator or erector specified in box 7. Till now we have covered table 323.3.1. For testing methods and acceptance criteria, we should review paragraphs 323.3.2 through 323.3.5 based on paragraph 323.3.2 procedure impact testing of each product form of material for any specification including wells in the components shall be done using procedures and apparatus in accordance with ASTM A370 Let's have a look at ASTM A370, a standard test methods and definitions for mechanical testing of steel products. In section Sharp Impact Testing, you can find all requirements through paragraph 19 to 29. You know that such requirements for impact testing is also specified in the applicable specification, for example, a333. In addition, in paragraphs 323.3.3, test specimens, 323.3.4, test temperatures, and 323.3.5, acceptance criteria, code specified impact test that may find different from the applicable standard or ASTM. A370. Based on B31.3, when conflicts exist between the specific requirements of this code and the requirements of those specifications, the requirements of this code shall take precedence. Through this course sessions, we have covered the concept of design pressure, design temperature, design minimum temperature, and impact testing. Also, you know about the role of code, a standard, and a specification in the project. Therefore, it's the right time to start pressure design of piping components. In next episode, I will talk about pressure design of a straight pipe. Thank you for being with us.